There was some misty high cloud at the beginning of stage 14. That soon burnt off, and so did a group of 18 riders as part of a high-quality breakaway that went for it in the run to Pico Valuercas. Dead centre of the stage, a peak that everyone feared. The Ballesteros, only three kilometres in length, so how come a Category 1? Because it had ramps of more than 20%. By the time our breakaway got there, they were starting to attack each other and Roman Bardet was looking for mountains points. He'd already taken the Category 3 test at the beginning of the day and wanted these as well. Belly Julie took control of the King of the Mountains competition over the top, moving nine points clear of Caruso, who was within the main body of the peloton that were chasing on. Was well, the peloton rode together, the breakaway were attacking each other. Nico Prudhomme decided to push on, leaving Clement Chapuzin uh, an easier ride. Holmes was part of that trio, but a rear puncture put paid to his challenge. And we thought this had done the same for Jay Vine. Big moment. We thought he might even be out of the race. Not a bit of it. He was to pick himself back up off the asphalt and get a spectacular finish. Meanwhile, Prudhomme, Navarro and Van Mark were pushing on. Prudhomme suddenly was alone and we were asking ourselves why and then we saw this replay. Van Mark, difficult corner, was just about to get through it and then Navarro took his front wheel away, leaving Prudhomme alone and up front. He was pushing on as best he could and on the final peak, Zeitz tried to bridge over to him. Prudhomme working for Clement Chapoussin was part of a ever more selective breakaway that started to fracture itself. Bardet pushed on, leaving Chapuzan the man he feared most for the final test, along with Pidcock and others in that group. 6.2 kilometres to go and Bardet still very much in charge. He rounded both Zeitz and Prudhomme and went for it. Jay Vine remarkably was back in this race and he, riding with Jesus Harada, were trying to close the gap on Bardet, but he just kept extending it. And by the time we headed to the line, it looked like the Frenchman would get his first Grand Tour win outside of France. Bardet switched to Team DSM. Many wondered about the wisdom of that, but it seemed a very wise move indeed. He gets a stage win to make it three for the team. What a welter they are having, and what a day it turned out to be for so many. Vine finishing third behind Hazel Serrada in that podium sprint. Meanwhile, our attention turned further down the mountain. Miguel Angel Lopez with the desire to test Primoz Roglic. He went off for Movistar, leaving Mass an easier ride within the pack. But the gap he established was to be snuffed out. Roglic determined in the final sprint to put the hammer down and in so doing caused some worry, I'm sure, for Old Christian Eiking in the leader's jersey, who'd been challenged on this stage by Guillaume Martin. So Lopez hit the line and then a quartet of greats behind him. Roglic with Mass, Bernal and Haig. Then a bit more of a gap back to Adam Yates. And indeed yet more great riders who will animate the remainder of this race. An incredible day of racing. So many great stories, not least there, Old Christian Eiking coming across the line, just giving away two seconds to Guillaume Martin overall. Bardet's day, it certainly was. Not only winning the stage, but also taking control of that polka dot jersey. Harada behind him ahead of Vine, Pidcock, Chapuzin, Holmes, Zeitz, Genietz, Prudhomme, but just look at the rest of the breakaway. Arno de Mar hanging on, the sprinter for a last point, finishing in 15th place, just ahead of Lopez. Odd Christian Eiking stays in the red jersey, going into another climbing day ahead of the rest day. Eiking leading by 54 seconds ahead of Guillaume Martin, Roglic, Mass, and Lopez, your top five, with plenty of racing still to come. Bardet will wear the polka dots, and I imagine he'll be hunting yet more points as we head to the finish of stage 15 tomorrow, which will introduce us to the rest day. Bardet leads on 50 points, 19 clear of Caruso, 
but with two Category 1 tests on Stage 15, yet more points are up for grabs and surely we'll reach out for them. Well, they say the feistiest fights are in barrack rooms and tomorrow we head to El Baraco. And this is what the profile looks like. Two Category 1 tests sandwiching a Category 2. The final climb may only be a Cat 3, but it's a downhill run to the line. And you can be certain it will be full of drama, as it always is on La Vuelta.